Hello everybody, I'm Trady Jabarin. This time we have a great question that um, I received from one of the viewers and his name is Anshut Abey. And the question speaks about a very important subject. It's about what true art is and who is a true artist. This is a question that everybody <clears throat> in the academies and art institutes that try to find an answer of what a true artist is and what truthful art is and now I'm going to give answer for that. Do you know any artists, especially actors, that are true artists and have also made it big into the mainstream? Also, could you name some books that a serious actor must read? Thank you Anshit for the question. I will give the, I will give the names of the books or I will speak about this topic at the end of the uh, uh, episode. But in the moment, let, let me speak a little bit about what true art is and who is a truthful artist. Now, we need to differentiate, first of all, between well-made art and true art. And uh, those two are two different things. Let's think about art as a channel. This channel is supposed to deliver a specific content. For example, think about like we have water water that we need to drink and this water we can drink it directly from the ground we can drink it uh, directly from the kitchen or we can shape a specific structure that is supposed to contain this content and this structure that we uh, shape is the art it is supposed to uh, make it easier for us to um, receive that content and this content is the water sometimes content can also be toxic that means that we can use specific structures to deliver toxic content it can be on the physical level it can be poison and it can be uh, chemicals it can be biological it can it, it can be a lot of things in art it is the same thing. The art of acting is art. Music is art. Theater, film, painting, photography. There are endless uh, arts that we can master and learn and recreate and create and be original in finding new interpretations of how we make things. This is what art is. Now art can be good, well made, it can be less worse made and that depends also on the ability of the artist and his uh, mastery of his art. So when we see amateur artists they don't have the same ability of uh, and the knowledge and the experience and the professional knowledge that is relevant to their art. They didn't make enough training to master that knowledge and to make it also practical, not only on the intellectual, theoretical level. So, um, those, this, like professional artists can make well-made art. Still, well-made art doesn't necessarily say a true art. So, what is a true art and what is true artists the definition of a true art a true art or a true artist exists in the word true which comes from the word truth truth it is um, it, ha it has nothing truth is a content it's like water it has nothing to do with the structure and the form that we shape in relevance to the content, to the substance. In addition to truth, there is also other, like we spoke on, on chemistry, there's other uh, substances that can be delivered through art. So for example, if we take Hollywood, there is huge budget productions that can um, that make good art with good music, with good acting with good uh, technique, light, sound, etc. But does Hollywood stories really deliver truth? 
is it really a reflection of reality with all its complexity? Is women, how they are, how they are presented in a Hollywood film, are like this in reality? Are men, the image of a man, is really like this in reality? Is the image of the American man like this in reality? Is the image of the Vietnamese man, of the black man, of the Arab man, of the Muslim man, is like this also in reality? Or it's a, a choice of Hollywood to twist reality to create untruthful art, not true art. So good art is not necessarily true art. It doesn't contain the substance uh, of truth, doesn't necessarily contain the substance of truth. But it can be good. It can be also not well bad made art, but it does contain the substance of truth. Like there's a lot of YouTube channels that they uh, lack finance, uh, financing and they lack, <clears throat> they lack financial support, but they make their best to create content that is not toxic, to create content that it is dedicated to the awakening of the public. Uh, it is dedicated to reflect truth. And this is a true art. The equipment, the, the budgets can be very low and can be sometimes even there are artists that are amateur, that amateurs that don't have the abilities and the technique to deliver well-made art, but they are true artists. <clears throat> of course, with their abilities, but their art is truthful. And of course, there, there is art that is very toxic and not truthful at all. And we can see this generally in, in um, theaters that belong to the public sector or to amateur artists that are narcissistic, that don't care really about life. They're not curious about the complexity of reality. They are not curious in discovering what this world is about to inter give interpretations to how they observe. The, they don't care about this. So they create narcissistic art that is also bad made because they don't have the real time and the efforts to study art because they're busy with themselves and not with mastery, not with self-mastery. On the other hand, their twisted perspective of reality that is self-centered motivated is incapable of seeing reality with its complexity they are they lack empathy that they can't stand from different points of views try to see the world from uh, other others people's point of views uh, point of view so that's why it makes their art very toxic and very bad made and there is of course the art that is true art and um, well-made art, which is um, very rare, very rare. It really needs people who believe in it and they are passionate about it, and they still uh, make their art not to support not to support political agenda. There is nobody in the background that is manipulating their art to create public opinion or to create. There is no political interest behind it. And those who create uh, good art and true art. But as I said, I'm not sure when was the last time where I saw good art and true art. I'm not sure when was the last time that I saw it. So um, back to your question. So just a moment. So as, as I said, um, so I, I don't know artists who are true artists in the moment that really uh, work in the mainstream because the mainstream today is dedicated to serve as a function and that's why where it gets the big money. On the other hand, there is also, uh, let's say, in countries that are kind of capitalist slash social, like countries in Europe where they give money to theaters and to uh, to create 
sometimes it's of course it's uh, the art is recruited like theater is is uh, s- financed by political interests that have interest to promote their agenda but let's say in some places where they really give money to create art still the art is toxic because who is really making decisions are not let's say artists that came from purity they came uh, but they came from nepotism that they know somebody that their friends some of their families so they gave them a job in the theater and that's how they got a job in the theater and all their calculations even if they don't have big political uh, background supporting their art but they still make decisions out of their uh, self interest so this is also can create what i call toxic art so um so this is i answered your question concerning that allow me to talk a little bit about the books that you asked for so normally what i do with my acting classes i don't give my students the relevant books to read unless for example we finish a course because i prefer that they read the uh, content the th- theory after they have already went through the practice and that's because of i i don't want to put them in 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 a box so but in general when it comes to books there is a i will give you a couple of books but we will also need to be aware of um many books that are out there that are also i would call them um even when they are best sellers but they are not really helpful because they shape a belief system to the artist that can that create certain definitions of what art is and how art should be and etc etc et and what acting is and what good acting is and it doesn't let doesn't keep space for linguistic definitions it doesn't keep space for the, the artist experience and that's why there are many uh, even best sellers books that i won't recommend to read so it's 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 not only which books to read it's also which books not to read and this is uh, this is also be especially when you when you speak as acting for, for books for actors and acting is not only the theory there's a lot of acting teachers that never acted on stage they didn't uh, experience what acting is but they can sit there and intellectualize and speak about art because they have read some books here and there so and when you hear them they sound brilliant they sound as if they know what they're doing but actually they don't have the practical knowledge and that's very difficult for people to look locate so it's very easy for those <clears throat> teachers to convince people very fast that they know what they mean and they know what they're doing and poor people who uh, don't know what's going on they will buy into it immediately and get engaged with um so it's very important that the practice in addition to to the theory the theory is wonderful it's great it it will put your knowledge in order and it will keep you on track but practice you will know the whole body will understand what that theoretic knowledge is about without the body experience the theoretic knowledge i it's not relevant i know a lot of actors that when i give them a character to work with or i give them a role or we i work as an actor in a film and they can read the character and intellectualize what this what this character is about and speak about its past and about his history about the history and give a lot of theoretical information knowledge about it etc but when it comes to the application i see that there's a huge gap between the actor's ability to um, apply the knowledge that he just talked about and here comes the the distance between the theoretic theoretical knowledge and the application so if you speak about acting i would have suggested to go on practice first and of course i i don't say I, like you it has to be a program that is structured 
if you get into an acting school or you choose to join an acting class, it's supposed to be structured. It is supposed to be um, theory and practice as as one. So you go through the practical experience and then then depending on the method, yeah. I don't know which what acting class you're choosing or what method you're choosing, but uh, the teachers are supposed to know what's going on and they're supposed to give you the relevant books to the relevant practice. So I, since I work mostly with, um, let's say the Stanislavski system and Stanislavski's um, method, so normally I choose specific books that are relevant to Stanislavski. Of course, uh, in addition to that, there is great books of uh, like Grotowski and Peter Brook that I also um, suggest to read. Of course, again, when you read those books regard without the, pra the practice, you may create a concept. And this concept may keep you in, um, in a the prison of the belief of that concept. So it may not be necessarily helpful. Uh, and many actors live this way, unfortunately. But when you go in, in a course where the school or the teachers know what they're doing and they're not improvising, they studied acting, they worked as actors, they will not mislead you. They will give you the relevant practice and later and in, on the right time with a calculated structure they will give you the relevant theory. So you don't need to worry about the theory. It's, it's, uh, what is more important here is the intelligence of the body. It's the emotional intelligence in, to, to, to grow on the emotional level. And the in intellectual will grow, if not from the theory, it will grow as a result of the observation. You will be in that relevant state of being where you can observe reality in a way that can uh, remind that theory but if you read the theory first you will put yourself in a box so this is at least how I, I find it and that's how I treat my when I work with actors that's how, how I work mostly so as I said if you still insist to uh, read some things check Stanislavski uh, check Peter Brook and check Grotowski I hope I could help you answered for this question and I hope that I gave some um, relevant knowledge. Thank you so much everybody for watching. I hope to see you in the next video.